All right, <clears throat> back here on page 33 of Algebra 1098. These are the end of the story problems, and then you're gonna head into the checkup and a review and the self-test, all right? Um, and then hopefully do well on the pace test. But let's uh, let's talk about the story problems here on the bottom of page 30, I should say 32 through 33. <laughs> Uh, these involve sometimes having two or three quantities and uh, a little more complicated. Now most of these, they kind of set it up for you to start with and then you have to just take it from there and finish the problem. All right, so they do that in example one. And some of the measures of the angles of any triangle equal 180 degrees. All right, so that's a good geometry fact. If the degree measures of the three angles of a triangle are consecutive integers, how many degrees are in each angle? So remember consecutive integers, x, x plus one, x plus two. And then you see they give you the equation. You just add those together to equal 180. They do a similar problem number two, they set it up and then they give you the equation to solve. All you have to do is solve for x. But stop and think about, pretend like you don't have the work shown and see if you can figure out how they came up with the little equation that they did, all right? Number three is kind of tricky, the way they worded it, wow. The first angle measures 10 more than the second angle. So actually the second angle is the smallest angle, okay, do you see that? So the first angle is 10 more than the second angle. So if we let x represent the second angle, and the first angle is 10 more than that, so x plus 10. And then it says the third angle is 10 more than the first angle. Well, the first angle is not the small one, remember? The first angle is not the x, it's actually the x plus 10. And now we're going to do 10 more than that, so actually we're saying x plus 20. You got to really think about it, okay? You can't be distracted, focus on it, all right? But then How many degrees in each angle? Um, okay, so do, so actually now, now that I'm looking at number three, um, oh, it is of a triangle, which is why they told us over here on page 32 that the sum of the measures of any triangle equals 180. So they're not reminding us of that in number three, but you do need to put all three of those little statements together equals 180, okay? So we gotta remember that. That's why they have that fact over there. All right, let's look at number four. A father is seven times as old as his son. The sum of their ages is 56. What is the age of each? So what I find helpful is to always think, which is the smaller one? Obviously the son, right? The son is the smallest age. So we'll let him represent X. The father, it says, the padre is seven times, so seven X, seven times the age of his son. The sum of their ages is 56. So sum means addition, so we can add these two together, all right, and then have it equal to 56, and then go back and solve for x. And then you're not done. Once you know the age of the son, you're also supposed to go and figure out the age of the father, all right? Let's talk about number five. There were two candidates in an election. The successful candidate won by 160 votes. Okay, so again, this is number four, number five. <clears throat> Two candidates. We're going to try to just use one variable X. So the one who lost had the fewest votes. So let's let the fewest votes for the loser <laughs> the loser got X number of votes, but the winner had how many more votes than the loser? Okay, you always think of the lesser one first. So the lesser one, we don't know, that's X, but we know that the winner had 160 votes more than the loser. 
So x plus 160, and then we know the total number of votes. So now we can set up an equation to put these two together equals is the total votes cast. And you see that right there in problem number five. And then you can go back, once you solve, you'll know x, the number of votes the loser got. Add 160 to that, you know how many votes the winner got. And you can check it. If you add those two, you should get the total number of votes. All right. And then um, when you get to number six, they have um, three statements for you. So they're kind of helping you out there, setting it up. And then that is the end of story problems for now. Well, you have some on the checkup. And I would highly recommend that before you do the checkup, look it over, read each problem, think about it, go back and look at some of the problems that you did in the, uh, throughout the pace and see if you can find one that's similar. And then underline keywords. Okay, so for instance, in number seven on the checkup, it says the degree measures of the angles of a triangle. So we think, oh yeah, 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 if it's a triangle, all three angles will add up to 180 degrees. So even though that number is not in problem seven, that is a fact that we should remember and know by now, okay? Uh, let's see, and then looking at the checkup number nine. So you did some problems like that where you figure out what the denominator is, the least common multiple of the denominator is just to multiply everything through so that you totally get rid of the um, fractions. That makes it easier. And do the same thing on number 10. All right. Review takes you back to pace 1097. And uh, as you go throughout the pace, you're going to keep getting review from each of the paces <coughs> so that hopefully you don't forget and it'll keep building. So that's the last video that I'm planning to do. Um, unless somebody sends me some input via the website saying we need help with a particular uh, problem or concept somewhere else in the pace or maybe even on the checkup or self-test, you do it and then you realize, ah, uh, let me know. Otherwise, um, do your best and I trust that you do well and finish strong and uh, we'll start taking a look soon at the next pace, 1099.